Let's go show you victory in one fell swoop. Frontal assault? Yes. The world will now witness the strength of my army. Agreed. I shall become conqueror and unify the land. To this I swear on my father's sword. Forward! After the death of Sun Jian, his son Sun Se trained and studied under the care of Yuan Shu. When he came of age, Sun Se borrowed troops from Yuan Shu and invited his friend Zhou Yu to help him fulfill the legacy of his father. As he marches to conquer Jiangdong, Sun Se holds in his hand the sword of his dead father. Let's go show you victory in one fell swoop. Frontal assault? Yes. The world will now witness the strength of my army. Agreed. I shall become conqueror and unify the land. To this I swear on my father's sword. Forward! <laughs> After the death of Sun Jian, his son Sun Se trained and studied under the care of Yuan Shu. When he came of age, Sun Se borrowed troops from Yuan Shu and invited his friend Zhou Yu to help him fulfill the legacy of his father. As he marches to conquer Jiangdong, Sun Se holds in his hand the sword of his dead father. This sword belonged to our father. I once swore by this sword that I would become conqueror. Now it falls to you. Take it. Yes, brother. If I must. I believe in you. Brother? Brother! Oh. <laughs> this sword belonged to our father. I once swore by this sword that I would become conqueror. Now, it falls to you. Take it. Yes, brother. If I must. I believe in you. Brother? Brother! Oh. <laughs> I have no doubt. No doubt lingers in my heart. I'll defeat Cow Cow, and we will prevail!
I have no doubt. No doubt lingers in my heart. I'll defeat Cow Cow, and we will prevail! General Zhou, everything is ready for the fire attack. And the front guard has left. Hmm. This is our chance. Now is the time to wipe out Cow Cow's fleet. All units, attack! Leave no one alive! General Zhou, everything is ready for the fire attack. And the front guard has left. Hmm. This is our chance. Now is the time to wipe out Cow Cow's fleet. All units, attack! Leave no one alive! Cow Cow! Your reign of terror is at an end! You're not a hero! My bow is aimed for the heavens! My bow is aimed for the heavens! We're under attack! First, take out the guards! Now, set the camp on fire!
What are you doing? Sun Li. Liu Bei and I are finished. Now I am merely a daughter of the Sun family who wants to protect Wu. We march now. Come with me. Yes. What are you doing? Sun Li. Liu Bei and I are finished. Now I am merely a daughter of the Sun family who wants to protect Wu. We march now. Come with me. Yes. More enemies! No! Reinforcements! What? Joe you! end of a desperate battle, Sun Quan repelled Liu Bei. After retreating as far as Pai Di Castle, Liu Bei falls ill and dies. Zhu Ge Liang, having been entrusted with the future of Shu, seeks to revive the alliance with Wu. Feeling threatened by Cao Cao, Sun Quan accepts. The three kingdoms of Wei, Wu, and Shu are established. A few years later, Sun Quan declares himself emperor. My brother fulfilled our father's destiny and conquered Jiang Dong. Zhou Yu defeated Cao Cao's immense army, but they are both now dead. Unification through force is no longer possible. But brother, your ability to nurture a country to prosperity far exceeds theirs. Maybe. I 
as Emperor of Wu, will protect this land until the end. I will make it the most prosperous land on earth. That is my oath. Wei and Shu exhausted their strength through years of fighting. On the other hand, Sun Quan focused on domestic affairs, avoiding meaningless conflicts. For this reason, Wu survives the longest of the Three Kingdoms. At the end of a desperate battle, Sun Quan repelled Liu Bei. After retreating as far as Pai Di Castle, Liu Bei falls ill and dies. Zhu Ge Liang, having been entrusted with the future of Shu, seeks to revive the alliance with Wu. Feeling threatened by Cao Cao, Sun Quan accepts. The three kingdoms of Wei, Wu, and Shu are established. A few years later, Sun Quan declares himself emperor. My brother fulfilled our father's destiny and conquered Jiang Dong. Zhou Yu defeated Cao Cao's immense army, but they are both now dead. Unification through force is no longer possible. But brother, your ability to nurture a country to prosperity far exceeds theirs. Maybe. I, as Emperor of Wu, will protect this land until the end. I will make it the most prosperous land on earth. That is my oath. Wei and Shu exhausted their strength through years of fighting. On the other hand, Sun Quan focused on domestic affairs, avoiding meaningless conflicts. For this reason, Wu survives the longest of the Three Kingdoms. The Liu Bei and Sun Quan alliance wiped out Cao Cao's forces. Cao Cao retreated north and died, sick from despair. The land was now divided between Wu and Shu. Sun Quan and Liu Bei each declare themselves emperor. They swear everlasting friendship and peace between their countries. What an excellent waterway. With this, trade between us will flourish. Also, the devices. The wood ox has proven extremely useful for farming. I am proud that our knowledge and skill could be of assistance to you. <laughs> <laughs> we will compete in growth, and our lands will prosper. Let this new world continue on, forever. Wu and Shu maintained good relations, and a lasting peace was established throughout the land. The Liu Bei and Sun Quan alliance wiped out Cao Cao's forces. Cao Cao retreated north and died, sick from despair. The land was now divided between Wu and Shu. Sun Quan and Liu Bei each declare themselves emperor. They swear everlasting friendship and peace between their countries. What an excellent waterway! With this, trade between us will flourish. Also, the devices. The wood ox has proven extremely useful for farming. I am proud that our knowledge and skill could be of assistance to you. <laughs> <laughs> we will compete in growth, and our lands will prosper. Let this new world continue on forever. Wu and Shu maintained good relations, and a lasting peace was established throughout the land. The battle between Sun Quan and Cao Cao ended with Sun Quan victorious. 
Cao Cao's forces collapse upon his death, leaving the entire land at the feet of Sun Quan. Sun Quan then declares himself the Emperor of Wu. Brother, I have at last fulfilled your dream. The era of your father's sword has ended. However, the most important battle is just beginning. I must restore prosperity throughout this battle-worn land. Sun Quan appoints many capable people to office, and together they struggle to rebuild domestic affairs. In Sun Quan's reliable hands, China embarked upon a period of long-lasting peace. The battle between Sun Quan and Cao Cao ended with Sun Quan victorious. Cao Cao's forces collapse upon his death, leaving the entire land at the feet of Sun Quan. Sun Quan then declares himself the Emperor of Wu. Brother, I have at last fulfilled your dream. The era of your father's sword has ended. However, the most important battle is just beginning. I must restore prosperity throughout this battle-worn land. Su Quan appoints many capable people to office, and together they struggle to rebuild domestic affairs. In Sun Quan's reliable hands, China embarked upon a period of long-lasting peace. One after another, Sun Se eradicated his foes. At long last, Sun Se fulfills his dream of conquest. Brother, will you not reconsider? I don't have long to live, but as long as I do live, I wish to hone my battle skills. You have a gift for politics. You can govern this country far better than I. Brother? Hmm. Zhou Yu! Let's go! Yes. Zhou Yu! Have you heard of any interesting places? Far to the west is the Empire of Rome. Excellent! That will be the first place we take! Following Sun Se's wishes, Sun Quan ascends to the imperial throne. Through wise government, Sun Quan leads China into an era of prosperity. It is said that Sun Se and Zhou Yu continue to fight in faraway lands, but that is another story. One after another, Sun Se eradicated his foes. At long last, Sun Se fulfills his dream of conquest. Brother, will you not reconsider? I don't have long to live. But as long as I do live, I wish to hone my battle skills. You have a gift for politics. You can govern this country far better than I. Brother? Hmm.
Joe, you! Let's go! Yes. Joe, you! Have you heard of any interesting places? Far to the west is the Empire of Rome. Excellent! That will be the first place we take! Following Sun Se's wishes, Sun Quan ascends to the imperial throne. Through wise government, Sun Quan leads China into an era of prosperity. It is said that Sun Se and Zhou Yu continued to fight in faraway lands, but that is another story. Sun Quan withstands Liu Bei's offensive, then launches a counter-strike, taking down Liu Bei's fortresses, one after another. Ultimately, they reach the walls of Chengdu. <laughs> it is a shame. My talents were not enough to prevail. Liu Bei and Zhu Ge Liang die, and Liu Bei's forces collapse. The country is now divided in two, with Cao Cao in the north and Sun Quan in the south. Each declare themselves emperor. The powers of Wei and Wu continued to struggle against each other, but Sun Quan was never able to unify the land. Sun Quan withstands Liu Bei's offensive, then launches a counter-strike, taking down Liu Bei's fortresses, one after another. Ultimately, they reach the walls of Chengdu. <laughs> it is a shame. My talents were not enough to prevail. <gasps> Liu Bei and Zhu Ge Liang die, and Liu Bei's forces collapse. The country is now divided in two, with Cao Cao in the north and Sun Quan in the south. Each declare themselves emperor. The powers of Wei and Wu continued to struggle against each other, but Sun Quan was never able to unify the land. In no time, Sun Se eliminated the weak powers in Jiangdong and created the powerful kingdom of Wu. His ferocity in battle was likened to Xiang Yu, the conqueror of old and Sun Se became known as the Little Conqueror of Jiangdong. Seeking to further expand his power, Sun Se determines his next target.
In no time, Sun Se eliminated the weak powers in Jiangdong and created the powerful kingdom of Wu. His ferocity in battle was likened to Xiang Yu, the conqueror of old, and Sun Se became known as the Little Conqueror of Jiangdong. Seeking to further expand his power, Sun Se determines his next target. Sun Se's death allowed Cao Cao to focus on the north. He defeated Yuan Shao and took Hebei, which made Cao Cao the strongest power in the land. It was clear that Cao Cao's next target was the south. After bringing order to his kingdom, Sun Quan seeks expansion in order to withstand Cao Cao. He sets out to subjugate local rulers, beginning with Liu Biao, Sun Se's death allowed Cao Cao to focus on the north. He defeated Yuan Shao and took Hebei, which made Cao Cao the strongest power in the land. It was clear that Cao Cao's next target was the south. After bringing order to his kingdom, Sun Quan seeks expansion in order to withstand Cao Cao. He sets out to subjugate local rulers, beginning with Liu Biao, Shortly after Sun Quan assumed power, Cao Cao began his campaign south. A terrified Jing province surrendered without a fight. Cao Cao easily obtains Jing. Capitalizing on his momentum, he sends an ultimatum to Sun Quan, ordering him to surrender or be destroyed. Shortly after Sun Quan assumed power, Cao Cao began his campaign south. A terrified Jing province surrendered without a fight. Cao Cao easily obtains Jing. Capitalizing on his momentum, he sends an ultimatum to Sun Quan, ordering him to surrender or be destroyed. Meanwhile, Cao Cao defeats Yuan Shao and takes Hebei, becoming the greatest power in the land. It was clear that Cao Cao's next target was the south. Sun Se sets out to expand in order to withstand Cao Cao. He turns to subjugating local rulers, beginning with Liu Biao. Meanwhile, Cao Cao defeats Yuan Shao and takes Hebei, becoming the greatest power in the land. It was clear that Cao Cao's next target was the south. Sun Se sets out to expand in order to withstand Cao Cao. He turns to subjugating local rulers, beginning with Liu Biao. A 
few years after Sun Se had gained control of Jiangxia, Cao Cao's forces begin advancing south. A terrified Jing province surrenders without a fight. Having easily obtained Jing, Cao Cao sends Sun Se an ultimatum, ordering him to surrender or be destroyed. A few years after Sun Se had gained control of Jiangxia, Cao Cao's forces begin advancing south. A terrified Jing province surrenders without a fight. Having easily obtained Jing, Cao Cao sends Sun Se an ultimatum, ordering him to surrender or be destroyed. With the help of Zhou Yu, the combined forces of Sun Quan and Liu Bei defeated Cao Cao. Leaving a defensive unit in Jing, Cao Cao gathered the remnants of his army and retreated. With Cao Cao's main force gone, Liu Bei's forces move into action. They quickly capture the northern part of the Jing province. With the help of Zhou Yu, the combined forces of Sun Quan and Liu Bei defeated Cao Cao. Leaving a defensive unit in Jing, Cao Cao gathered the remnants of his army and retreated. With Cao Cao's main force gone, Liu Bei's forces move into action. They quickly capture the northern part of the Jing province. Not content with northern Jing, Liu Bei soon has control of southern Jing too. Though it was Sun Quan who successfully repelled Cao Cao at Qi Bi, the spoils of war all went to Liu Bei. This was due to the planning of Liu Bei's strategist, Zhu Ge Liang. Not content with northern Jing, Liu Bei soon has control of southern Jing too. Though it was Sun Quan who successfully repelled Cao Cao at Qi Bi, the spoils of war all went to Liu Bei. This was due to the planning of Liu Bei's strategist, Zhu Ge Liang. Sun Quan gained control of the southern part of Jing ahead of Liu Bei. Seeing that he could not win, Liu Bei withdrew his forces. Divided in two, the Jing province is ruled by Liu Bei in the north and Sun Quan in the south. Sun Quan gained control of the southern part of Jing ahead of Liu Bei. Seeing that he could not win, Liu Bei withdrew his forces. Divided in two, the Jing province is ruled by Liu Bei in the north and Sun Quan in the south. At this time, Cao Cao clearly has the greatest force. Wu is the next most powerful but cannot compete with Cao Cao. In order to obtain the power to stop him, you must gain Jing and this land of Yi. This will divide the land in half, Cao Cao in the north and us in the south. Then, a decisive battle with Cao Cao and the unification of all the land will be simple. At this time, Cao Cao clearly has the greatest force. 
Wu is the next most powerful, but cannot compete with Cao Cao. In order to obtain the power to stop him, you must gain Jing and this land of Yi. This will divide the land in half, Cao Cao in the north and us in the south. Then, a decisive battle with Cao Cao and the unification of all the land will be simple. With the help of Zhou Yu, the combined forces of Sun Se and Liu Bei defeat Cao Cao. Leaving a defensive unit in the Jing province, Cao Cao gathered his defeated army and retreated. With Cao Cao's main force gone, Liu Bei's forces moved into action. They quickly captured the northern part of the Jing province. In opposition to Liu Bei, Sun Se quickly moves to control the south of Jing. With the help of Zhou Yu, the combined forces of Sun Se and Liu Bei defeat Cao Cao. Leaving a defensive unit in the Jing province, Cao Cao gathered his defeated army and retreated. With Cao Cao's main force gone, Liu Bei's forces moved into action. They quickly captured the northern part of the Jing province. In opposition to Liu Bei, Sun Se quickly moves to control the south of Jing. Through his own brilliance, Sun Se repelled Cao Cao's army. Leaving men to defend Jing, Cao Cao gathered his defeated army and retreated. Riding the waves of victory, the Wu army surges toward the Jing province. Through his own brilliance, Sun Se repelled Cao Cao's army. Leaving men to defend Jing, Cao Cao gathered his defeated army and retreated. Riding the waves of victory, the Wu army surges toward the Jing province. Sun Quan toppled Cao Cao, who then abandoned his march southward and withdrew his army. While Cao Cao and Sun Quan contended, Liu Bei forced the surrender of Chengdu and captured the entire Yi province. Having possession of the Jing and Yi provinces, Liu Bei becomes as powerful as Cao Cao and Sun Quan. Sun Quan toppled Cao Cao, who then abandoned his march southward and withdrew his army. While Cao Cao and Sun Quan contended, Liu Bei forced the surrender of Chengdu and captured the entire Yi province. Having possession of the Jing and Yi provinces, Liu Bei becomes as powerful as Cao Cao and Sun Quan. The Wu army captured and executed Guan Yu of Jing. Hearing the news of Guan Yu's death, a vengeful Liu Bei gathered his forces to attack Wu. Hungry for revenge, Liu Bei's assault on Wu is fast and furious. The Wu army is forced into a defensive stance.
the Wu army captured and executed Guan Yu of Jing. Hearing the news of Guan Yu's death, a vengeful Liu Bei gathered his forces to attack Wu. Hungry for revenge, Liu Bei's assault on Wu is fast and furious. The Wu army is forced into a defensive stance. Fearful of a Sun Quan invasion, Liu Zhang requested relief from his distant kinsman Liu Bei. Leading a force, Liu Bei traveled to Ba Xi. However, Liu Bei suddenly seizes Ba Xi and begins to march against Chengdu. Fearful of a Sun Quan invasion, Liu Zhang requested relief from his distant kinsman Liu Bei. Leading a force, Liu Bei traveled to Ba Xi. However, Liu Bei suddenly seizes Ba Xi and begins to march against Chengdu. Liu Bei forced the surrender of Chengdu and gained possession of the entire Yi province. With Yi and half of Jing under his control, Liu Bei now held power nearly equal to Cao Cao and Sun Quan. By halting Cao Cao's advances on Jing, Sun Quan had helped Liu Bei to expand. Liu Bei forced the surrender of Chengdu and gained possession of the entire Yi province. With Yi and half of Jing under his control, Liu Bei now held power nearly equal to Cao Cao and Sun Quan. By halting Cao Cao's advances on Jing, Sun Quan had helped Liu Bei to expand. Sun Quan seizes Chengdu ahead of Liu Bei and takes control of the Yi province. At the same time, Cao Cao raises an army and campaigns south, taking control of northern Jing. Having no place to go, Liu Bei's forces crumble. Zhou Yu's plan to divide the land in two is realized. Only Sun Quan and Cao Cao are left to compete over a divided continent. Sun Quan seizes Chengdu ahead of Liu Bei and takes control of the Yi province. At the same time, Cao Cao raises an army and campaigns south, taking control of northern Jing. Having no place to go, Liu Bei's forces crumble. Zhou Yu's plan to divide the land in two is realized. Only Sun Quan and Cao Cao are left to compete over a divided continent. Sun Se attacked Liu Zhang and gained control of the Yi province. Liu Bei died in the Battle of Chengdu and his forces collapsed. It was believed that the long-feared clash between Cao Cao and Sun Se was about to begin. Sun Se attacked Liu Zhang and gained control of the Yi province. Liu Bei died in the Battle of Chengdu and his forces collapsed. It was believed that the long-feared clash between Cao Cao and Sun Se was about to begin.
early in the war, Sun Tse appeared to have the upper hand. Aiming to reverse the situation, Cao Cao forced the emperor to issue an edict ordering a campaign to stop Sun Tse. After much thought, Ma Tseng of Liang and Liu Bei of Yi each accept the edict. Suddenly surrounded, Sun Tse is forced into a terrible position and faces defeat. Early in the war, Sun Tse appeared to have the upper hand. Aiming to reverse the situation, Cao Cao forced the emperor to issue an edict ordering a campaign to stop Sun Tse. After much thought, Ma Tseng of Liang and Liu Bei of Yi each accept the edict. Suddenly surrounded, Sun Tse is forced into a terrible position and faces defeat. Liu Bei became king of Hanzhong. He placed Pang Tong in Chengdu as the strategist in the fight against Cao Cao and commanded Zhuge Liang and Guan Yu to unify Jing. At this time, Wu Sun Quan sends an emissary to Guan Yu in Jing, reminding him of Liu Bei's promise to give up Jing after conquering the Yi province. The seal matters little while the emperor remains in Cao Cao's power. Saving the emperor must come first. The seal should be returned to Sun Tse, and we should form a pact with him. Then we can concentrate our forces on Cao Cao. We should pay close attention to the Liang province. The other day, Cao Cao issued a false imperial edict that resulted in the death of Ma Teng. Ma Teng's son, a daring general named Ma Chao, is certain to rise in revolt against Cao Cao. We must form an alliance with Ma Chao as well, so that we may surround Cao Cao on three sides. The woman who assaulted Liu Bei was Sun Li, sister of Sun Se. Following this, Sun Li gathered together the remains of the Wu Navy and joined Cao Cao. She is assigned to defend Ru Shu Ko. She then took the initiative to cross the Changjiang River and attack Jiangxia. Liu Bei's forces on the northern side of the Changjiang were hit from behind by Cao Cao and were easily routed. Because of this, Liu Bei must abandon his plan to cross the Changjiang and attack Cao Cao. He is forced to march up through Yi. However, Cao Cao planned for this and had already captured the majority of Yi. Liu Bei and Cao Cao are now to face off in this remote frontier. Guan Yu's advance north was being stalled by Cao Cao's surprisingly resilient troops. Seeing his chance, Sun Quan invaded from the south. With his retreat cut off, Guan Yu made a stand at Xiangyang. To save Guan Yu, Liu Bei hurriedly puts together an army and rushes toward Jing. I don't understand. The Han Empire is on the brink of collapse. Of what value is the Emperor? It is not possible for two suns to climb the heavens. Even as the old sun sets, its light can still be used. And when the new day dawns, it is a new sun. Is this not what you are saying? Huh. We shall show the world what it means to be Imperial troops. All units, listen to me! We are now the Emperor's army! You must prove your worth! Go now! Smash the rebels! Cao Cao is now the protectorate of the Han Emperor. 
With the emperor as a figurehead, Cao Cao has taken a giant step on his own path to power. Our victory over the traitors Lu Bu and Yuan Shu make this drink especially sweet. Hmm. Such small men are not worthy of my blade. <sighs> what brings me joy is... victory over my true rivals, heroes. Heroes? Yes. A hero embraces ambition. Ambition strong enough to cradle the universe and envelop the Earth. In our land, the title hero can be given to only one man. And that man is you! Huh? What? what Hero, I am not deserving of such a title. Huh, there's no need to hide it. Why would men give their lives to you if you were not deserving of the title hero? I am merely a servant of the Han. Lord Cao Cao, I have no wish to contend with you. That sounds reassuring, but remember, if you ever try to defy me, I'll destroy you! <laughs> Me. Be grateful that I have spared you. But there will not be a second time. Remember that. Prime Minister, it has been a long time. Guan Yu! Forgive me, but I have come for your neck. <laughs> How clever of Zhuge Liang to send you here. To be killed by you of all people. I will not beg, not to you. My lord! My lord. I have killed the Prime Minister, who had a hold on my heart. When next we meet, you shall only be Cow Cow to me. Guan Yu! You... The rain is falling hard, and we cannot see! Pull back! Soft. You will regret allowing me to live. Still. Farewell, Guan Yu. Ha! attack and the front guard has left hmm this is our chance now is the time to wipe out cow cow's fleet
All units, attack! Leave no one alive! Look, my lord! The entire enemy fleet is consumed in flames! Something is wrong. I do not see any people here. Gorgia, you tricked me. What are you planning? I shall give you what life I have left, but only for a price. You have a death wish? <laughs> I shall not die alone. Show. Our, our time has finally come! Go, go. You must be victorious. Damn! Pull back! Leave the ships and retreat! It, it's no good! We're too late! Cao Cao fought furiously for his goal of uniting the land, but he was unable to stop Liu Bei and Sun Quan. The land was divided in three. An uneasy balance is formed until one day. My lord, why not ascend to the emperor's throne? I cannot speak for Sun Quan or Liu Bei, but my purpose is to unite the entire land. How can I take the throne with this unfulfilled? Hmm. My glory is like the crescent moon. I shall always regret that I did not get the part that is hidden by shadow. A few months later, Cao Cao fell ill and died. Cao Cao's son, Cao Pi, succeeded him and then unseated the emperor and declared himself the new emperor. He also declared Cao Cao emperor posthumously. However, Cao Pi is unable to unify the land, and the country enters the long period known as the Three Kingdoms. Cao Cao defeated the Liu Bei and Sun Quan alliance. However, fate was cruel. Though the fulfillment of his dream was soon realized, Cao Cao did not have the time to enjoy it. It appears I shall not see the unification with my own eyes. I did not expect Liu Bei and Sun Quan to resist for so long. <laughs> I raced across a sky of chaos and brought about a new day. You know, I believe my life was like that moon there. A few months later, Cao Cao became ill and died. Cao Pi, following in his father's footsteps, managed to finally unite the country a few years later. Cao Cao takes Ye and captures Yuan Shao. Though they had known each other from an early age, these two men walked their own paths to power. Now, in the battle for the land, their paths cross once again as victor and prisoner. How dare! Release me! I will not try to escape. I see you have not changed. Still, you will not bend, huh? Uh. Now I am your prisoner. Fate can be so cruel. I would rather... I will not beg. I still have my dignity. Perhaps the new world you bring will not be so bad. 
the new sun shines forth and dances brilliantly in the eyes. Yuan Shao is executed, and the lords who had followed him all swear allegiance to Cao Cao. Cao Cao had finally succeeded in bringing unity and peace. He built a new country, a new order, that lasted for many years and brought prosperity to the land. Cao Cao overwhelmed the rebels. The leaders of the opposition, Liu Bei, Zhuge Liang, and Sima Yi were captured and brought before Cao Cao. Your rebellion has been crushed. I fear your reign will be very harsh. Huh. Constant wars weaken the people greatly. You are the ones who do not understand their pain. I do not. Wish to live in a world without justice. New Bay. Sometimes justice is not enough. The instigators and their families are all executed, once and for all bringing an end to the rebellion. Cao Cao then devised a system of strict laws to govern the unified land in an attempt to bring peace and strength back to the people. By defeating Lu Bu and Yuan Shu and absorbing their armies, Cao Cao's strength increased dramatically. At the same time, to the north, Yuan Shao had defeated Gong Sun Zan and was fortifying his position. Liu Bei was sent to eliminate Yuan Shu's remaining forces, but instead he rebelled against Cao Cao and declared independence in the Shu province. Aware of the potential threat, Cao Cao first moves his army towards Liu Bei. Cao Cao eliminated Yuan Shu, subjugated Lu Bu, and proceeded to absorb the remnants of their forces. Cao Cao's power had dramatically increased. To the north, Yuan Shao had defeated Gong Sun Zan and was fortifying his position. Yuan Shao also invited Liu Bei's rogue army to join his. Cao Cao and the Yuan Shao Liu Bei Alliance both prepare for the inevitable battle for central China. By overthrowing Yuan Tan's army, Cao Cao gained control of Hebei. Now, Cao Cao is the greatest power in the land. Cao Cao turned his eyes south. Gathering an enormous army, he marched toward the Jing province. In Jing, the elderly prefect Liu Biao died of illness, causing further confusion in the land. Caught in the midst of a squabble over succession, Jing fell to Cao Cao's invasion without being able to put up a fight. Liu Bei, who had been living in Jing, escaped to Jiangxia after refusing to surrender. Having taken Jing with no losses, Cao Cao decides to extend his southern campaign and take Wu. Preparations continue in Jing. Cao Cao defeated Liu Biao and forced the surrender of the Jing province. However, reports reached Cao Cao that Yuan Shao had broken the truce and had begun an invasion. Yuan Shao took the cities of Xu Cheng and Luo Yong and stole the emperor. Cao Cao's forces are now in a perilous situation and a change in strategy is needed. Allow me to explain my plan. At the present time, the strength of each of our enemies is as follows. We must first defeat our nemesis, Yuan Shao. 
His lands are vast, but therein lies his weakness. Yuan Shao is fighting Sun Se, who is sheltering Liu Bei. Spread out along the border, his troops have left the front lines shorthanded. Thus, I believe we can take a force from Xiangyang, break through the front line, and drive into Ye. When Yuan Shao loses his capital, he will have no choice but to run. My plan begins on a different front. My lord must defeat Sun Se first. The alliance of two heroes like Liu Bei and Sun Se poses a great threat. Yuan Shao's forces are vastly larger, but they are nearer. If we do not destroy Sun Se and Liu Bei quickly, we will regret it later. Lord, attack the Jing province first. After Jing falls, I will unveil my plan to destroy Sun Se and Liu Bei. Cao Cao destroyed the Yuantan forces as he conquered Hebei. Additionally, a separate force under Lu Bu conquered Jing. However, the treacherous Lu Bu rebelled and claimed the Jing province for himself. Cao Cao heads for Jing to punish the traitor. Cao Cao defeated Lu Bu and gained control of Jing. With the lands he took from Yuan Shao, Cao Cao now controls the majority of China. The greatest of those remaining are Liu Zhong of Yi and Sun Se of Wu. Together with his officers, Cao Cao plans an attack on Wu. Cao Cao accepts Yuan Shao's proposal and concedes part of his territory to form a truce. At the same time, Cao Cao sends his forces to capture the fertile Jing province. Cao Cao's meeting with Guan Yu was truly a stroke of luck. He then escaped to Xuchang with his life. However, encouraged by their victory at Qi Bi, Wu and Liu Bei's forces invaded and took Jing. Using Jing as a base, Liu Bei went on to take Yi. Liu Bei's forces have now grown to equal that of Cao Cao and Sun Quan. A few years later, having rebuilt his forces, Cao Cao once again sets out to dominate the lands. Cao Cao crushed Ma Tseng and gained Shi Liang. Elsewhere, the Wu army accepted the fugitive Liu Bei and using his forces invaded Yi, capturing everything south of Chengdu. With this new power, Wu is now able to contend with Cao Cao. After annihilating the remnants of Yuan Shao's army, Cao Cao began rebuilding his forces. On the other side, the Wu army accepted Liu Bei, who lost his base. Using his forces, Wu invaded the Yi province and captured all that is south of Chengdu. With this new power, Wu is now able to contend with Cao Cao. Cao Cao's army took Jianye and annexed Wu. The remaining forces of Sun Se and Liu Bei headed north to throw themselves at the mercy of Yuan Shao. Yuan Shao absorbed these forces and was growing more powerful by the day. 
the land hangs in suspense against the inevitable clash between Cao Cao and Yuan Shao. To Cao Cao, Liu Bei's betrayal came as a complete shock. Allying with Ma Tseng, Liu Bei and Xu Ge Liang's rebellion seized both Zhang An and Luo Yang. Though charged with the defense of Xu Chong, Sima Yi freed the emperor and joined the rebellion. Liu Zhang also rebelled. Cao Cao has unexpectedly lost half his territory and finds himself in dire straits. Having overwhelmed Han Zhang, Cao Cao planned to push on into Yi. However, seeing his chance, Guan Yu gathered a force and pushed north for the unprotected Xu Chong. He quickly took control of the area around Fan Sheng. Cao Cao cancels his plans for the conquest of Yi and pulls back to Xu Chong. 